What is a lychee and how can you use it to 3D print? You call it lychee? <laughs> Who says lychee? Who says lychee, man? My name is Ground Affected and welcome to the time your wife didn't share the last roller with you. Today I'm going to show you the program that I use to slice my models for 3D printing. I hope this video will give you some insight into the things that I use to get my models prepared for 3D printing. When it comes to 3D printing, there's predominantly two applications that we use to slice and prepare our models before we send them to a 3D printer. My throat is dry. The application that I first started using was Cheeto Box, and I had a lot of crashes and a lot of problems with bugs and things on the previous computer that I was using. I recently upgraded my computer, and before I did that, I had already changed over to Lychee. Lychee never crashed as much on my computer. It also was a lot easier for me to find islands and support them. This is an important part in resin 3D printing because when you print a part, you need to make sure that that part is supported adequately in order for it to print correctly. Otherwise you end up with a big mess on your hands and nobody likes a mess. I'm gonna briefly take you through the steps that I take to get a model prepared for printing in Lychee Slicer. So when you open up Lychee, you will be greeted with a screen that looks like this. I have the pro version of Lychee Slicer. You don't need this pro version. The free version is more than adequate enough. In the pro version, you are given access to a couple more settings for you to really refine your 3D print. But none of this is necessary for an excellent job straight out the box. You can use the free version, which I will link in the description below. For this video, I chose a really simple file from Sanix, which is a Vin Diesel bust. It's only two objects, so it's going to be quick for me to set up. And what I do is I select both objects and I open them into the slicer. Depending on the speed of your computer, this may take a while. Lychee is busy counting all the polygons and making sure that this model is intact. I'm going to just check what printer I'm on. I'm currently on the Sonic Mighty which is not the printer I want to use for this. You can set up different printers in your 3D printer settings here, and you can attach different settings for different resins for each printer. So I will select my Sonic Mini for this exact print. I'm going to make it a lot smaller than what it is. As you can see, he most certainly does not fit on the Sonic Mini. Lychee imports everything to the center of the build plate, so if you've got small items, you may need to grab them and move them out of the way so that you can see them all individually. For this specific print job, I'm going to scale this guy down. So if you look on the left hand side of the screen here, you've got a couple of tools. We're going to scale this guy down so that he's not so huge. And for this instance, we're going to go with about 50% and see what that looks like. I'm happy with that size. We can tell that this chin is going to be a bit of an island over here. I don't want to have any supports on the face of this model. The back is nice and flat, so it'll be quite easy to sand this out. However, there is a little bit of detail on the back here, but it's not as important as the detail in the front. So we want to try to preserve as much of the front of the model as possible. This isn't going to be a supports tutorial or how to do supports or anything like that. I'm mainly just going to show you the functions that I use in Lychee. In the future, I'll do a video based around how I do my specific supporting technique. I'm going to have to tilt Uncle Vin over here so that I don't get any islands on his old double chin. Just make sure that he fits on the build plate still. Let's have a look at his little cross over here. So they have an arrange tool, which is a new tool that's been recently added in one of the recent updates. This allows you to rotate your items as well as move them around. Um, you can move them on a specific axis only, or you can grab it and move the item wherever you want to move it. It's a really nice tool to have because this kind of combines two functions in one where usually if you wanted to rotate something, you'd have to go to the rotate tool and then rotate him and hope that you don't grab one of these because then you'd have to undo that which can be a really slow process. If you've already put a lot of supports on the model, it can take a while for the computer to figure that out. So this combines two of these tools together, which is really cool. Um, obviously it doesn't allow you to move it up and down and it doesn't allow you to rotate it on any other axis other than the Z. The next step for me in preparing these models for print is that I don't wanna print this whole thing full of resin because it's gonna cost a lot of money to do that. So I'm gonna go into the prepare menu which is up here in the top. And we're gonna go down on the left here to hollow. On the right hand side, it's gonna give you an extra tab here, which is gonna be all the tools that you need for hollowing this model. So we'll go to hollow all. In this tab, it allows you to hollow a specific object or all the objects on the build plate. In this case, I know that this tiny little cross isn't gonna be hollowed anyway. It's way too small. So I'm just gonna go with hollow all. I'm gonna set my thickness down to two millimeters as it's not a massive model. Lychee gives you an automatic infill, so this means you won't be supporting the inside of the model. 
but it will give you an infill to support that inside of the model. You can adjust the density of this, usually I go with around 15. And then in the same menu, I'm going to use the holes so that I can create holes for suction and for clearing the resin out and cleaning the inside of the model so we don't have any leakage. So starting at the bottom, we want to make sure that we've got holes for suction is the most important. And since it doesn't seem like much else is going to start on a lower part, I think I'm going to just keep all my holes down to the bottom here. So in order to check where these holes are, we have to go on the right hand side here where it says clipping and we're going to move this little scroll thing all the way up. As we can see, the item is represented hollow by black on the inside. White is everything that's going to be printed. So that is essentially a slice of the model. Remember I said this was too thin to be hollowed? Well, you can see it's definitely not hollow. So I'm not worried about this part at all in this process. So what we're looking for is to find where those holes are that are placed. What you've got to remember is that as soon as this opens up in the center here, this creates a suction. And if that suction is enough, that it's too strong and it overcomes the supports that you're using to hold it down, it will 100% pull this part off the supports and you have a failed print. So these specific holes are not for drainage as much as they are for preventing suction. Perfect. So we've now covered suction. Suction has been covered by those holes. We want a couple more holes to make sure we can get more of our cleaning product into this item around the bottom of this statue because you're not gonna see these. If you had placed previously holes and you realize that they were perhaps too big or too small, you can select them all and you can go and adjust their size over here. And as you can see, this makes them bigger or smaller. So I'm going to make my holes a little bit bigger in this instance, just to make 100% sure that it's going to be easy to get alcohol in there to clean it up later. Okay, great. Now that we've done that, we're going to go over to the left hand side and click on support. In the supports here, what we're going to do is we're going to go at the bottom of this tab and there is a tab called utilities. We're going to click on utilities. Now we need to lift our model off the build plate. We can't fit a support in here if it's too low. So I have mine set to five millimeters. And we're going to click up on there, which will lift up the model. And that will give you your separation from the build plate and your model for you to fit your supports into. So at this point, you've got two paths to take. If you're not so sure about supports and you would rather the machine does the job for you. At this point, you can click on this little magic button. So when you click on it, it's going to give you a load of these options. Preferably click on medium because lights will probably be too light. Also, I don't like to use auto orientation because I've already orientated my model the way I think is going to be correct. So I'll click that off in this instance. But if you're not sure about yours, you can click on. Unfortunately, it doesn't take into account faces. And if it thinks that the best way to support this model is on its face, it's going to do that. And you're going to have a lot of support marks on the face and it's going to be a bad time. You're going to click I'm feeling lucky. You allow your computer to think about it and it will automatically place supports where Leechy thinks is the right place. In my opinion, I don't feel like this is enough on this bottom plate. So you would probably want to go in and just add a couple more at the bottom here. But chances are this, this could survive a print. I'm going to show you the next amazing tool that Leechy has. If you go into this tab and you click Island, it's an Island detector. So we'll click search. What will happen is it will show you where all your islands are. If you're new to 3D printing, Islands are the parts that are showing at the bottom as the print builds up. You need something holding onto those parts, otherwise they won't be able to print because it can't print in thin air. So I'm going to start off. I will support this little cross to show you guys how I support that. So what we start off doing is I'm going to start off the medium. I'll place two mediums on the bottom of this cross. Probably overkill, but it's guaranteed to hold on. I'll place a medium here, a medium here and a medium here. And then you'll notice that there's a yellow now. That yellow is showing all the parts that are facing most to the build plate and most likely would need some support. So sometimes you will get a red one. I'm still not 100% sure why it does this. I feel like this is something that's crossing a path or doing something incorrect. So I just go back and I just replace it again. The raft that I use is Pixelate. And the way that I've calculated mine is that the thickness of my raft and the amount of layers that I use for burning correlates to each other. The information that I used to work that out is enough to make an entire video. So I'm not going to go over that in this video, but I'm just going to show you how I changed the thickness of my raft. I use a 0.3 millimeter thickness and that correlates to the amount of bottom layers and exposure time. As you can see, this is the part supported 
and for this thing it's super tiny so it's not going to take a lot of support to get this to print well i'm going to show you how i export these models onto a flash stick so that i can take these and plug it into the 3d printer you're going to make sure that the printer that you want to print on is selected in the printer over here you can also make sure that the resin that you've set up is also selected if you want to choose anti-aliasing on or off you can choose standard depending on what you're using with the anti-aliasing again that's information for a whole nother video and then you're going to click export slices to file and you'll select the drive from the left hand side over here this is pretty simple saving stuff on a computer unfortunately my cameras and my microphone and everything are plugged in so when i'm recording i'm actually not able to save anything to an sd so you'll have to just pretend that i click save and that it worked for now though i'm going to save it onto my computer just so that i can show you what it looks like when it starts to export Hopefully that video was good enough to give you the rundowns of the basics of using lychee slicer. If there's any questions that you have, leave them in the comments below. And as usual, make sure to like, subscribe. And if you didn't like any of that video, then you know exactly what you need to do. We all know what you need to do. Just f*** off! Already. That's gonna have to do.